um, JL Pennington to step up, step up so that you can see what JL looks like. Um, again, And whether it be for robotics competitions, being in the school play, wrestling, basketball, softball, whatever, we know how much time it takes from the parents. So congratulations to the parents, everyone here being honored, because it is a lot of work and a lot of effort and time on our part after a long day to run our kids. But you know what? Kudos to you and JL. Just keep making us proud at AG. Thanks. for having us tonight and also thank you to the families for coming. Um, I'm very happy to introduce two of Mason Town Elementary students for our examples of excellence in the areas of pageantry and athleticism. Um, their family, school, and community have supported them in their endeavors and tonight I'm very proud to introduce to you these two outstanding students and recognize their individual achievements tonight. Um, Jackson Mickens, could you come up, please? Um, Mason Town Elementary School's third grade student, Jackson Mickens, um, had a triumphant wrestling season. Jackson's record boasts a 53 to 1 winning season for the year. Over the weekend of March 14th, Jackson represented the Outer Gallatin School District as the Area 1 champion, um, and that was over Fayette, Green, and Somerset counties, at the Pennsylvania Junior Wrestling State Championships in Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. Jackson went 5-0 at states, um, so he is the 8U Heavyweight State Champion, Jackson Mickens. This banner will be hung in our school for the rest of the school year, and then um, he'll get to take it home for his bedroom. Uh, at, at Mason Town, we've been fortunate enough to have two state wrestling champs in my tenure as principal, um, and Maurice Jackson was the first one several years ago, and now Jackson Mickens. So it's a huge honor to have him. So I have another student um, who is a second grade student at Mason Town. Her name is Olivia Long, and she was crowned the National American Miss Pennsylvania in August 2018. The areas of competition that secured her title included 
community involvement, beauty, um, interview, personal introduction, delivering a speech on stage at a venue with hundreds of people. Um, Olivia's poise is something that stands out when you meet her. She volunteered weekends at Mason Town's Helping Hands and even started her own organization, Coats for Kids. Olivia donated those proceeds to our school and her fellow students at Mason Town. Olivia then competed at the national level in the state of California where she placed in the top 10 for modeling. Olivia, can you come up please? <laughs> Olivia would like to share her speaking skills for all of you if that's okay. Seeing is believing, and today I see a bright future for me. I am already an award-winning dancer, and the first place track and field runner, and a pretty awesome big sister. Although I'm only seven years old, one day I want to be our country's first female president, because I am a girl who believes. I believe in God, I believe in miracles, and I believe in me. From me to town, I am Olivia Long.
she's coming up. I'm sorry, you were behind her, but right after she um, finishes, you may come up. Okay. Come on. <laughs> My name is Erin Cunningham, and I live in Ada, Pennsylvania. And then, good evening, Mr. Peg, and members of the school board. I've lived in German Township for 26 years, and my husband has lived in German Township for close to 46 years. My husband and I, my husband is one of four children and has five step siblings. Many of them reside and, are ra and have raised their children in this district, and several of their children are now raising children in this district as well. My husband, Tom, has two sons, and I have three sons. So I stand here tonight with a vested interest in the decisions you're making concerning our teacher contracts. I met your school district as a parent in the fall of 1998 when my oldest son, Ryan, is in kindergarten at Platt Elementary. And I, and I have had children enrolled in this district until the present time. My youngest son, Nathan, is currently a freshman at AG High School. I think we can agree that times have changed over our past 20 years together, and the challenges teachers face have changed too. Our most recent demographics show our school district is now servicing 51.22% economically disadvantaged, 20% special ed, 164 child custody court-ordered children, and an undetermined number of students being raised by grandparents. On paper, we do not look like the most inviting demographics for a young couple starting a family. Yet I believe because of the teachers, administrators, and school board members, investing in our children as people and not a product or a dollar sign, our graduates are investing back in our community. I know this because thanks to this school district, my son Ryan graduated from Albert Allen in 2011 and then Penn State University, and currently works for Consult in Green County. He married Ashley Casper Jenkins, who graduated from Albert Gallup in 2010, then Penn State, and she works in the corporate office for Met Express. They built their home in Albert Gallup School District. My stepson TJ graduated from Albert Gallup in 2012, and is a machine operator for West Rock, in California, and he married Hillary T. Barry Cunningham, who graduated from Albert Gallup in 2011 and finished her degree at California University this spring. Their home is in McClellan Town, and my granddaughter just started kindergarten at Lyle. My stepson, Rob, graduated from Albert Gallup Senior High in 2014, is employed at U.S. Steel and Clarion, but resides in Fairchance. My son Clayton is a graduate of Albert Gallup in 2017 and currently a college student at Penn State. He dates Allison Wilson, who graduated from Albert Gallup in 2018, and she is currently attending California University. When they graduate, when they graduate, they'll have to decide where they both live, but both of them speak highly of this district. I tell you this to show you that our schools do make a positive impact on the sustainability of our communities. Not only my children and their cousins, but their friends and classmates are returning to this community to invest in this school district by buying homes and starting families. Choosing the right school to raise your family is a true investment because every parent knows we only have one chance for our kids to get the foundation they need to become successful, productive members of society. <coughs> My family supports the teachers who invest in their students every day to make a difference in our lives. And we believe, believe as taxpaying, voting members of this community, we need to respectfully invest in our teachers. Believe, I believe that our greatest asset is not our businesses to attract people to find work and live here. In fact, most of the interactions with these young families that I have show they work outside of the area, but live and support the local businesses here. I have found our greatest asset to be the lineage of good teachers that provide rich learning environments for our students to grow and learn. 
I fear without high quality teachers in classrooms with reasonable work environments, all that we'll be left with is an unattractive set of demographics and graduates who have no care for a district who have no care for them. Your vote matters because our schools matter to our kids and to our community. I believe Albert Allen School District has been a common denominator for many years in positively growing and sustaining our community. So, as a taxpayer, I need a clear vision from this board that encompasses the commitment to sustaining a school district that will continue to attract our graduates and their families to live, contribute, and support these communities. This needs to start with a commitment to your teachers. I would like to close with a short speech that Clayton gave at the Top 20 Banquet his senior year. Thursday that were mandatory to make the team. 
As you can see in the complaint, I gave Mr. Pegg a written and a verbal complaint. I have those complaints if any of you want to see them. Some of you have gotten them, some of you were emailed, and I've given them to some of the prospective future board members as well. And I did some research and I talked to some people about the situation. Um, but when the tryouts were given, he would like to see one of those. And again, in the complaint, Mr. Page, you once quoted, the largest firm in the world is room for improvement. You also quoted, it's always been a passion working, providing services for others, especially you. Taking these words to heart, I'm confident you will find a fair resolution to the issue that you and I have discussed. At this moment, the main concern is the birth of a child struggling to find a place of comfort and belonging and helps her to enhance her ability to overcome her challenges with ADHD. Avery was diagnosed with ADHD in the third grade. I had trouble um, with our school performance. Um, luckily, it ended up that after Avery was diagnosed and treated for ADHD, she had the same teacher again. And that teacher had noticed the change and the positive outcome of that. Throughout the course of the years, Avery has come to me and asked that she didn't want to be on meds anymore. She liked the way made her feel. So she took a big, strong interest in sports. She channeled her ADHD through sports. She's been medicine free for almost a year now. This is the first year that Avery has reached highest honors on her report card without going to the resource room and without taking medication. And that is something that she tackled on her own. She plays softball. She plays softball every night. She plays in her yard. She plays on several teams. She made it to the state championship last year. She tried out, she made it, and she was awarded. So when these tryouts came and she come to me and she's like, Mom, there's 23 girls trying out, I talked with her. I said, you may not make that team. And we're prepared. You're a seventh grader, there's eighth graders. And she was prepared if she didn't. Are her skills there? Absolutely. I sent Mr. Pay to the videos, which I don't know if you didn't get a chance to look at them of her performances. I pay money every week for her to go to pitching and hitting lessons. I've done this for two or three years. She's very established. There's no one that can say she doesn't have skills. What happened was, her biggest complaint was that there were several students that made the team that did not fulfill the requirements. The requirement was, you go to the tryouts, you be at the tryouts. There was no established assessment criteria given to me before those tryouts. There was no policy or plans given to me before those tryouts. The rule was you be at tryouts, you take part in tryouts. On Monday morning, two of those girls were on that roster at that school and practice. And when I asked Mr. Pegg about it, he said they would be assessed throughout that week. Was that fair? She's already on the roster. She's already, how do you assess her after you put her on the team? That is not a proper policy or a proper procedure. And she feels slighted by that. That is her biggest concern. I worked for it. I did my part. I went to every practice. I did my skills. I hit the ball to the fence. I fielded the ball, Mom. She kept giving me compliments. And there's three girls that made the team that didn't even go to the tryouts. Why? Because they were given special treatment. They took their situation, whatever it may be, let it remain confidential, it doesn't matter who it is or what their names are. They were granted extra treatment, a way to get them on the team, but did not fulfill the requirements. This girl did her job. This girl had braces that week. Her mouth was bleeding. She could barely talk, she couldn't eat. But you know what, I made her go. The rule was, you have to do it. I made her go, I made her carry through, and she takes pride in that. But she feels bad because there are girls that made the team that didn't fulfill the requirements. You have to put policies in place. You cannot treat kids like this. I've already taken her out and withdrew her from participating in the testing, and I do plan on taking her out and homeschooling her or cyber schooling her. 
because you need to make these kids want to come to school. There is no way you can tell me that you couldn't have made a spot for every girl. There was only 23 girls. But they didn't play every game. They didn't play, but they practiced every day. You know what the sad part of it is? Is when I get off of work today, and I drove to Mount Moriah to pick my son up from school, one of those girls did not make that team, was walking down to Smithville by herself after school carrying her books. And you know what I thought? How lonely that girl looked. She could be out playing softball, practicing, wanting to learn. This is middle school. This isn't high school. High school is a lot different. You better be established because that, that's your health or that's injury, that's skill. But this, you guys have the ability to take these kids, work with these kids, teach these kids skills, help these kids. Not everyone has the money to go get these lessons and, and participate in all these fees and travel fees and rent fees. It's very costly and time consuming. You have to get policies that are fair, fair to the kids. And that's what I ask you to do. Thank you for coming. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. If, if I can respond, um, President Swank, yeah. you know, uh, the I, I did get your complaint. I did arrange a meeting with both athletic directors, the softball coach and the volunteer assistant coach. We did go through everything. They did show me all their criteria and how they evaluated 31 girls. It wasn't 23. There were 31. And um, the girl that was there on the Monday that couldn't try out, that was known ahead of time to the coach and the athletic directors. Um, and she wasn't placed on a roster or on a team. I'm, they were going to give her, they explained to her. She, she was on the roster she and she was practicing on Monday. Talk. I didn't interrupt you. Um, that she was going to give, be given the same opportunity as the other girls who tried out and they would evaluate her with the same criteria and if she was good enough to make the team that's what they would decide. As far as the Facebook videos you sent to me, I don't Facebook, number one, and number two, if I did, that would be unfair for me to evaluate one girl's skills. I don't evaluate softball skills. I've never coached softball. Um, and number two, that would make it unfair because I didn't watch videos or have any part of any selection process for a softball team with 30 other kids. So that wasn't that I didn't have time or didn't take the time. It's that that wouldn't be appropriate for me to do that and tell coaches who they had to select on their team. And I team respect softball. that. You know, so that's why I did not view any videos because that would make it unfair. I didn't do that for anybody else. And we do have the coaches for a reason. It's not my job to select teams or to select players or positions for any sport. And you know, and, and, you know, your daughter is a very good student. I don't know her very well. I see her at North when I'm there. Um, but there was, from everything that the athletic directors that I looked into and spoke with the coaches, the tryout and all their ratings they shared with us. And they said that they couldn't, if you had too many kids on the team, there's no way with nine girls on the field at the time that you're going to be able to play everybody. And, they, and, I, and I understand that, and I respect your part about not looking at the video. With that being said, is it fair? Do you think it's fair for the coach that is the parent of two girls to automatically put those kids on the team? Shouldn't someone else have assessed those girls? Those girls are very good softball players, I don't deny that, but it's an unfair practice. This is why you need policies. You need stricter policies. Our kids don't want to participate. They feel left out all the time. You're struggling to get kids to stay in school. It's easy to go home and learn your curriculum on the internet. This, I mean, you have to look at it, and it's different. My daughter played that sport seven years ago. There was two teams. Every girl was on that team. The girls that were less skilled played, um, just played a lot of scrimmage games, but they still practiced every day. It doesn't cost money for those kids to be on the field practicing every day. There's kids now that aren't playing games. There, that happens with any sport. You earn your way. But you can't take all the hope away. And I'm not even speaking for Avery, because Avery comes to the conclusion, Mom, they don't want me. I don't want to be there. I'll go play with someone that wants me. I'm speaking for the other kids too. They need opportunity and it's slim pickings. 
And you've got to have policies that are fair, because if I was coming to coach that team and I brought two girls in, I couldn't say to you, I couldn't pick between the two of them. I would never ask the parent to do that. Well, right there's two spots already gone. And, and part of what you handed me, you said the two girls coach's daughters, that they're very good, they deserve to be on the team. Yes. So that, that would be unfair to not put people on the team because of who they are. With. But wouldn't it be fair to have an unbiased person evaluate those students? And it would be very fair, and it would alleviate a lot of this, and you and wouldn't could, have this. That could be the athletic director. Exactly, and that's what I'm asking you to consider, some policies to avoid this, to where she doesn't need to feel that she's less than adequate, to where she doesn't need to feel that it's always the same old whoever, the school boards. And I didn't read everything in the letters, because a lot of that has health stuff in there that's confidential. But you need to create more opportunities, and you need to have policies that are fair to everyone. If I was to coach that team, I would not want to pick. Because I would never go against my own daughter. I wouldn't see any parent going against their own child. You have someone else come. You have an athletic director that gets paid. He can take the time to come out, and he can come evaluate those kids and have some kind of assessment criteria to follow. I'm just saying, I'm not putting anybody down. I'm not putting the students, the teachers. I'm just saying you need policies to make these kids feel more welcome. She is a very good ball player. She's playing for two different teams right now. Yeah, she's very hurt. She called me crying from school. She wanted to play. She played with those girls. She has the skill. She's a very strong girl. She's stronger than what her own sister was. So no matter what anyone thinks about me or what we're here for, all that I worry about is she knows that I have her back. That's, that's all right. And that's what I'm here for. So please consider some kind of policy. And, and, I, and I do stand by it's been my philosophy my whole life is the biggest room in the world is the room for improvement. And that's not just the sports, that's life in general. No, but school is a lot different. It's harder, especially for kids with attention deficit. It, it's different. You need programs for these kids. So you can go ahead and get back to your agenda. Thanks for listening. Right. Thank, you. Thank, you. Thank you. Is there anyone else here for the public forum? Okay, moving on to secretarial, entry into executive session if needed. Um, Madam President, there is a need to enter the executive session for personnel in collective bargaining. Motion, please. Motion, second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Please. Second. All those in favor? Aye. Opposed? Motion 
Aries. <clears throat> Grant permission to pay the following bills and payroll for April 2019. Bills, utilities, insurance, and contractual obligations paid at the end of the previous month in the amount of $3,658,168.45. So moved. Second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carries. Current month general fund bills in the amount of $1,460,854.23. So moved. Second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carries. Except activity accounts report is presented by building principals. So moved. Second. All those in favor? Aye. Opposed? Motion carries. Adopt intermediate unit one policies, procedures, and use of funds for the individuals with disabilities education act Part B, according to requirements of 22 PA Code, Chapter 14. So moved. Second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carries. Accept the SBA contract for professional services in the amount of $1,650 for merging of employee policy section. So moved. Second. All those in favor? Aye. Opposed? Motion carries. Grant permission to pay the following capital project bills. Pittsburgh Stage, $13,142. This is for the AG High School Reading, Track, and Curtains. So moved. Second. All those in favor? Aye. Opposed? Motion carries. Grant permission to purchase, to purchase, I, I think we need to talk about this. Yes. We should have amended another part of it. This is just my opinion. If you a motion. A motion first. Okay. Are well, you asking the table? Well, no, I, I don't want to table it. It's just in my opinion, I should have said this at the workshop. Oh, okay. I thought, I thought yeah, just a comment. That I, I feel that right now at this time, I think that we should probably just purchase one. And then the one that is aging, just see how it goes and keep it in until we see if we would need that fourth one. I don't know how you, the rest of you feel about that. Do we all have to sort of make that a this is a This is a cooperative purchase okay. with co-stars. I, if, if you want to table it, put it back on the agenda for May, I, I don't, it's not going to be a detriment. I think that will be fine. If you want more discussion with Mr. Parham, I know he's not here this evening, but he would be at the work session in May. Yes, I mean, that's just my feeling. I, I should have said that at uh, the workshop on Monday. Let's talk just, about that a little bit more. I make that motion. Okay. Well, exactly. with, with, with nothing to table, we would die for lack of it. Okay. Okay. All right. Uh, moving on to correspondence. Uh, I would like to take this time to uh, thank all the members of the uh, faculty that helped with the high school musical. It was a very huge success. We had great attendance. And thank all the students for their time and dedication um, in making that musical performance uh, such a remembrance. So thanks to all who had a hand in on uh, the high school musical. Thank you.
Second. All those in favor? Aye. Opposed? Motion carries. <coughs> Grant Michelle Myers a leave of absence from approximately May 22, 2019 to June 4, 2019. Second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carries. Award 10 month secretary position at George J. Plata Elementary <coughs> to Tracy Hackney according to contract. So moved. Second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Aye. Motion carries. Award Tim Dye, health physical education teacher position at the AG High School for the 2019 2020 <coughs> school year according to contract. So moved. Second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carries. Award 12 month secretary position at AG North Middle School to Mia Schaefer according to contract. So moved. Second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carries. Award 12 month secretary position at AG High School to Terry Simon according to contract. So moved. Second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? <coughs> Motion carries. Grant Edie Howe an extension of a non paid leave of absence. From March 25th, 2019 to April 5th, 2019. So moved. Second. Second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carries. Grant Ephraim Yoder, Special Education High School Instructor, an educational sabbatical for the 2019-2020 school year. Second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carries. Accept the resignation of Denise Sheets, controller, effective June 30th, 2019. So moved. Second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Aye. Motion carries. I would like to take a moment to uh, thank Denise Sheets for her continued service to our to the Alba Gotten Area School District as the uh, controller for approximately 18 years. Um, she will continue to work with us, as you see, until June 30th. Uh, but Denise has been an asset to the district and I've enjoyed my time working with her and wish her all the best um, with her decision. She will be traveling now. Grant permission to hire Austin Bergman and Mike Cole as AG High School ninth grade boys baseball volunteer coaches for the 2019 season pending receipt of all proper documents. So moved. Second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carries. Uh, I'm also going to do this with blanket approval. I guess if anybody wishes to vote no or abstain, just say which item. Grant permission to hire the following high school coaches for the 2019-2020 season pending receipt of all proper documents. Nikki Trump and Jenna Sackett, co-head cheerleading. Gary Miller, football coordinator. Larry Flowers, assistant football, Sean Gaster, assistant football, Nate Turner, assistant football, Zach Dillo, volunteer, Bernie Wado, golf. Uh, motion? So Second. Um, I wanted to go no on number seven. Second. Um, we are going to have to have a goal call, Mr. Bush. No, you, 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 you got to, we, as long as you know who's oh, okay. going to know. I don't know the number of I'm going to say with respect to Nick Trump on the one. Oh, one other one is just playing, was that you? So, I was, so. Should we move on? Yeah, well, we have to vote. Uh, yeah, okay. Vote. Um, all those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Except for the ones who stay yes. in the program. Grant right permission to hire the following middle school coaches for the 2019-2020 season, pending receipt of all proper documents. Mark Dunham, head football. Craig Hoon, assistant football. Dylan Rush, assistant football. Allison Price, co-head chair. So moved. I would abstain from number two. I'm going to vote no with respect to one and two. My understanding is the vote needs my members, uh, school board members, and I believe that these are both main positions. I'm voting no, and, uh, as I always do, for them to agree. All those in favor? Aye. Uh, opposed? Madam President, I vote no for candidate number one, in spite of the fact that that candidate has 
over approximately 15 years of coaching and AD experience uh, in this district. <coughs> Secretary, report to Secretary Bill. Okay. Grant permission to add normal notes to security substitute list. Sorry. All those in favor? Aye. Uh, opposed? Motion carries. Renew James Galecki's Chief of School Security Contract for a term commencing July 1st, 2019 and terminating at midnight July 30th. 2020 June, under, June 30th. Oh, I'm sorry, June 30th, 2020, under the same terms and conditions and at the same compensation. Second. Second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carries. Administrator, accept Fair Chance Dental Arts Letter of Interest to report school dental exams for 2019-2020 school year. So moved. Second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carries. Grant use of AG South Middle School Gym and Cafeteria to AG MS football boosters on, and this is changed, this is for further let me know, it's May 24th and not for 2019 from 4.30 p.m. to 8.30 p.m. for your school dance, the contact person being Sabrina Dice. So moved. Second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carries. <coughs> Grant Troy Golden permission to attend the PRFSD conference in Erie, PA on May 17, 2019. The cost to the district not to exceed $300. Okay. Second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carries. Grant Lara Bezak permission to attend the PASFPC <coughs> Federal Coordinators Conference in Seven Springs from May 5th to May 8th, 2019, and a cost not to exceed. $360 paid by Title I and Five. So moved. Second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carried. Grant permission to superintendent and administration to negotiate with Intermediate Unit 1, early intervention and head start at Bay County for the leasing of classrooms at Deferred Swaney. Any proposed lease agreements are subject to the school board's final approval. So moved. Second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Opposed, I'd like to make a, a brief statement. This is um, this issue has been brought to us before, and um, in, in good faith, I went on to Delphi's website today to learn more about the students that they that they serve. And I, I thought I had an, an idea, and their website confirmed that. Their website says that their alternative education program is a temporary placement for students in grades six through twelve who have been removed from regular education due to disciplinary reasons that result in suspension or expulsion. Under their day treatment, which their website indicates that their, the students participate in that program in the same building, their day treatment offers a therapeutic setting for those students charged with truancy, incorrigibility, or disruptive behavior in the traditional school environment. And I thought I knew what incorrigibility meant, but I wanted to make sure. So you get with the Webster's Definition, it talks about the definition being incapable of being corrected or amended, depraved, delinquent, unruly. My concern is purely on a safety level. You are taking children who are in grades 6 through 12, and their behavior has been such that they've been removed from the regular school setting, and you're putting them in this building, and I think it's great that these kinds of programs are offered in furtherance of those children and their education and their therapeutic setting. But when you take then what we're, what we're potentially looking at is leasing another part of the building to programs that serve three, four, and five-year-olds who are, are very vulnerable, very impressionable uh, part of our society. And I know that now the issue's been raised that maybe we can make more money by leasing to both Head Start and Early Invention to the IU, but I, I don't care how much money it is, I think it's an unreasonable risk to take even if it, if it is the smallest little chance of risk, I, I just don't, I can't in good faith take that risk. That's what I'm going to tell Comment. Yes, sir. Go ahead. Go ahead. Uh, uh, Delphi Education is not just this location. They are located throughout southwestern PA. They have uh, schools at Latrobe, Dorwood, obviously here at Deferred Swaining. And they do provide an AEDY service in grades 6 through 12 for students that were placed here for disciplinary reasons. 
They also have a private license for private academic program, which is the majority of our students here that are here because they choose to come here, not because they were placed here. <clears throat> um, and I did uh, show the uh, people from Head Start as well as the intermediate unit, the early intervention. We toured the building during the school day while school was in session, and they were very impressed with how the program ran here. And um, personally, I, I don't feel that there's any risk to students that would be here. And I'm here on a weekly basis, and I certainly wouldn't recommend putting a program here that's going to put anybody at risk. Um, I fully believe, it, and that was with Head Start, as well as the intermediate unit, people who have been doing this for a long time that would love to be here and they're the ones that were contacting me looking for space and for asking for space to defer if the board would approve it. So I do respect uh, Mrs. Krupa's stance on it. Very respectfully understand we've all had discussions about the safety concerns and um, I believe that there are no risks to really consider. We would put up a barrier to the one hallway so the, the students wouldn't intermingle. Um, it, would be, it would be designed and set up so that Head Start students are with Head Start staff in their classroom and their section of the school as well as the early intervention. So they were um, seeking place for their programs and did seek um, us and contacted me. And so I think that's all I'm asking is for uh, an opportunity to work out a potential lease agreement. There's no decision being made tonight other than giving us opportunity to, to investigate. Um, I believe you will comment, Madam President. Okay. Uh, on Monday evening, Mrs. Kruger, you suggested when we were talking about transportation that it would be uh, a viable option to transport kindergarten through seniors in high school on one bus. I think it's a much safer environment that we're talking about here with experts from Head Start and the Intermediate Unit 1 than it would be to put kindergarten through 12th graders on one bus for transportation. If, Thank if, you, Madam President. If you had to guess who would be more likely to bring a dummy school or a mic to school who would make the rest, nothing happens and I was just being over precautious. But if, if this goes through and something does happen, I personally would never be able to forgive myself and that's why I'm taking the position I am. Call a comment. One, one. Yes, okay. We agree with where you've gone with this charity. Listen, all we're going right now is not I agree, I'm with you on this. But what we're going right now is just putting some numbers together and just see what it's all about. And that, and that tells me that tells me you're willing to sacrifice safety for, for money. This costs nothing to put numbers together. It still is going to come down to a vote of what we're going to do. And, and last month when the same issue was raised, the majority of the board said no, we're not going to do it. We shot this down before. We just put numbers together, we're going to go from there. I agree with you. I'm going to vote with you. I will say that there is also an elementary program currently here at this school. It's part of their private academic. We have elementary kids here grades K through 6. And they also private academic for um, emotional support. So those students are, are, are currently um, placed in this school um, by choice. Um, in a lot of cases, because that they need help uh, with the emotional support programs. And like I said, private academic with students who aren't a distant problem. They may not just be able to function appropriately at a middle school or a high school or an elementary, and they choose to come here because of the smaller setting, um, and they just do well here for the most part. Just to reiterate, this is not a final though. We are just going to get a little more information. So all those in favor? Aye. Opposed? Do I need to have it? Do I need to have it? 
twice on twice. Okay. That's okay. Okay, well, after all the discussion. Okay. Better than not. <laughs> Moving on to maintenance. Uh, um, before you get to that, I was asked uh, what the um, threshold is for required competitive build bidding. It's 20600 <coughs> for the year 2000, calendar year 2000. Grant permission to bid asphalt replacement at AG South Middle School's Broadway at the south entrance. Motion. I'd like to question this. Bill, yes, you weren't here Monday? Yes, I'm sorry. I'm with, with the work session? <coughs> uh, may, may I? <coughs> this, this number you have in your packet here. Uh, uh, 18,000 Where where did you come up with this number? Where did this number come from? That came from the contractor that came out last year when we discussed this project at South. That is to replace the asphalt that is failing <coughs> tremendously bad. I, I know what you're going to do with it. I want to know where you got the numbers from. I had this man come out uh, over the Company did himself. you all get one person to come out to give you a I had them come out to give me a budgetary number, sir. That's the just one? Yes, that was just for a budgetary number. I can't, I didn't Who know. Who was it? I mean, you throw this number out here, but there's no name or nothing attached. Um, you could, the you information was in my board packet, sir. I'm looking for it right now to give it to you. I, I just feel bad voting on this one. Well, we're putting it out. We're going to put it out for this. We're not. We're not. We're putting it out for this. Am I under the right understanding, Mr. Chesler? Well, why is this number in here? Yes. Is this number going to be put? This number was uh, gave to me by Yamiko excavating and paving out of Fairmont. I had the gentleman come down. That paperwork was in my bid packet or my board packet for all of you. This was from last year of May of 2018. I asked the board to do this and we have not moved forward with it. I'm asking again to move forward with it because the asphalt is full falling, failing very badly. What I want to do is bid the project. This is a number, but this was trying to get me and the board some kind of budgetary number of what it would cost to do this project. Okay, I just go for that word just come for this number reading this. Uh, okay, we're going to advertise it. Was, gonna, it's in your board package. We're going to have it. Quote right from the company themselves. I just can't understand why we can't have why we can't find local people to do this. Okay? Pardon? I, I just don't understand why we can't find local people to come give us some. They're numbers. probably one of the most local people around here that do most of the Fairmont? Located in Fairmont? Farmington. Oh, okay. This I'm is sorry. Fairmont. I'm, I'm sorry. sorry. I'm, I'm still not feeling very well. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. That's okay. That's okay. That's okay. That's okay. That's okay. That's okay. We're going to have to find this to give this out. Because it's, it's, it's close to the mid limit, so that many years gone by since that number was arrived. I asked the project, this was just to show what caused the bid number, you know, what it would cost. Okay. So, Chancellor, there's nobody in the school district that's uh, interested that you know of? Anybody within the school district that could do this? In the school, we're, we're sitting in the school. After bid, then we take the lowest, don't we? Yes. Correct. Yes. I'll make that motion that we take bids. Yes. yes. Thank you. Second. I'll second that. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carries. Grant permission to bid the still coding at AG North High School and George J. Plata Elementary School. Second. All those in favor? Aye. Opposed? Question. Motion We're getting back into this subject again about that now we're going to do this to seal it. We're going to get this for them totally to do it without no T and M and stuff involved in there. Am I correct? Correct. It's also in my board packet. In I'm asking you. Yes, sir. That's the way I proposed it in the bid packet. It's in this board. Okay. There is no T and M material. The first year I was asked to break the bid down, and I did so. I approved it brought the packet to the board, they voted on it and approved it, and that's the way we did it. And then I got in trouble for doing it that way. Now I asked since January to ask for direction on this bid packet, 
and I haven't gotten anything, I need to move forward on it, and that's why I did it. I did take out the TNM on the crack filling and the patch. Because it, it was in here. I read that where you were going to, you were going to be responsible for the... Uh, I'm going to be responsible for the crack filling. I'm just going to, you know, I'm not going to let them fill a crack halfway up because that's a worthless job. Yeah. Well, what I, what, the way I read it in here, when I read that one through this bit packet, I, the way what you have written down here is that you were, were going to be responsible is that you were going to do it. But you're not going to do it. You're just going to oversee it and make sure that it's done. Not, they're not allowed to seal code until I approve the process. All right. Okay. All right. Again, I will say, I don't know what is so hard about getting on the parking lot. Seal code Uh, adjourn. Next regular meeting will be held on May 15th. <laughs> <laughs> <laughs>